Speaking on behalf of the Data Science Teaching Team at the Information School, University of uh, Sheffield. So as I'm sure many of you are aware, there's been multiple calls over recent years for more topics related to fate, uh, data justice, critical data studies and so on to be integrated into uh, data science, computer science curricula. However, there's been less work on what happens in practice when people try and, uh, try and do this in, uh, in the universities and so on. Uh, so today I'm going to be presenting the findings of a collaborative autoethnography that was conducted by the data science teaching team at Sheffield uh, over the last uh, summer in which we explored uh, our uh, experiences so far, some of the challenges that we're uh, facing. Okay. Uh, so this is the teaching team, we're all co-authors on the, uh, the paper. Uh, if you take a, a quick glance at this, you'll see that we come from quite diverse disciplinary backgrounds. So I'm the social sciences, humanities person on the team. Uh, we've got psychologists, math stats people, and then a whole sort of variations of uh, computer science. Just a little bit of background about the uh, programme that we're teaching together. Uh, it's a master's degree in uh, data science. Uh, we began teaching in 2014. 15, and since this time we've seen significant expansion in student numbers, so now we're getting about 100 uh, students a year. Uh, and that expansion has been primarily international students, and the vast majority of those students are uh, Chinese students. Um, it's a one-year programme, um, one-year master's programme, and it's a conversion course, so students don't need to have a computer science or engineering background. Our aim is to... Uh, train what's called a type 2 data scientist, I guess, so they're more user needs oriented than uh, programming uh, oriented. In terms of what students are studying, it's quite tightly regulated in the UK, like how programs are put together. So there's seven compulsory modules that all students uh, need to take, plus a research dissertation. The compulsory modules are listed there on the, uh, the right hand side. Then they get a couple of optional. Uh, modules as well, big data analytics being uh, the most popular of those. Uh, you'll see on the right that data and society is a, a core module on the, uh, the programme. This has been the case since 2016-17. Uh, I'm the person that teaches that module uh, and on it we explore a whole range of issues around uh, the nature of power within society, uh, conceptualisations of structure and agency and how these relate to issues around data and algorithms. Uh, we explore epistemology, the sort of generation of knowledge, the philosophies around that. Um, the politics of data and algorithms, including issues of bias, fairness, and, uh, and so on. Ideas around data citizenship, legal and, uh, and ethical uh, reasoning. Um, so if anybody gets a chance to read Jared's paper, which was the paper that's, uh, that's missing, he talks a lot about these issues as well and bringing this more political orientation into, uh, into some of the uh, teaching around these issues. So I definitely recommend that. So five years in then to uh, teaching uh, this programme, we thought it would be a good time over summer to reflect on how we're working together as a team, coming together at this intersection of uh, disciplines across computer sciences and uh, social sciences, uh, and what this means for how we're integrating content related to uh, fate, critical data studies, data justice into uh, the curriculum. The methodology that we uh, selected was a collaborative autoethnographer. Um, this is a, a very qualitative methodology. It's essentially a group approach to autoethnography, where auto refers to uh, the self. So in the, uh, the study, the research team were also the participants of the, uh, of the study. The research process involved a uh, combination of individual written reflections on our experiences uh, as academics and teachers, uh, responses to um, provocations uh, about interdisciplinarity, uh, and a series of group discussions, and then we conducted uh, a thematic analysis of this data that we collected. So essentially it's an exercise in uh, group self-reflection and self-understanding in a socio-material context. So I just have to whip through some of our key findings uh, quite quickly. Um, there's obviously more in the, uh, the paper. Um, so in terms of our uh, current integration of uh, fate and critical data studies into the curriculum, we observed that 
We weren't perhaps as interdisciplinary as we, we sometimes like to imagine ourselves. We were a bit more on the multidisciplinary. So we had all the different elements there, but they were not quite as interconnected and synthesised uh, together as um, might be uh, ideal. In particular, much of the uh, fair and critical data studies content, uh, the teaching and the assessment was siloed on this uh, data and uh, society module. Uh, and whilst we observed that some of our stronger students were able to make the connections between the social and the practical modules uh, and bring more fair type ideas and work into their uh, work, uh, for a lot of students, if we're honest, they went through the data and society module, passed the assessment, and then forgot quite a lot of the uh, material as they went on to do their practical work and data visualisation, data mining, and, uh, and so on. So within the teaching team, we observed that we, we had this uh, general desire for more, uh, a deeper integration of fake content into the more practical modules. There's no real resistance to this within the uh, teaching team. So in terms of the challenges then that we observed in relation to this, one that came through uh, very implicitly, I guess, in the um, analysis of the data that we collected was around the politics of fate. This is something that's been brought up in the uh, conference, so something you're familiar with. We had this sort of surface level agreement that it would be great to embed more fate relevant content ideas around data justice into the curriculum, but no mutual understanding or real consensus at a deeper level uh, about what these um, concepts meant. Some of this reflected gaps in individual knowledge, different disciplinary backgrounds and, uh, and so on. Uh, and for some people this meant that they, they found it difficult to see the relevance of it to their particular areas, one area uh, being database design. So we've got some more work to do to share knowledge uh, across the team in those areas. Another major issue for us was around internationalisation. So as I mentioned, the majority of our students are international. Uh, and the majority from uh, China. So we have a lot of thinking to do about how we integrate more fake content uh, in a way that is not Eurocentric in nature. So we want to integrate our work in this area with broader efforts to decolonize the uh, curriculum. Um, in a wider social material context as well, putting all this in practice, we in the UK are in a very, very heavily marketized higher education system. And we have this kind of obligation, I guess, to our institution not to make changes that might damage student demand for our courses. And as yet, we're a bit unsure if there is a, a large demand for more fake content in the, uh, the curriculum. Uh, and although we might have ideas for how to solve some of these problems, we're all working in a very time-constrained environment which poses uh, challenges. So we do have a series of uh, recommendations coming out of this paper. I've only got five seconds left, so I'll uh, whip over these quickly. But they're around the creation of more empathetic uh, learning spaces, such as this environment, bringing this kind of environment into institutions, into teaching teams between, um, between different universities. Uh, the sharing of really accessible, easy 101 materials on some of the concepts and issues that we're discussing and working with that can be used by teaching teams to, uh, to broaden people's knowledge and understanding of the issues. Collaboration across borders and with decolonization experts to make sure the fate, that we're, fate work that we're bringing into our curriculums is not heavily Eurocentric or American centric uh, in nature. Uh, and thinking about how we can embed some of this into the data science competency frameworks that are being uh, published at the moment. Okay, thank you.